Oh, hey internet. I'm just kidding, relax. Okay, today I wanna to talk about something I get asked all the time and that is, can you pay for all of Waterloo off of just your co-op fees? And I think you're gonna to wanna to stick around because it's actually a pretty surprising answer. Don't forget, join the Discord. We've got the Discord going, we have almost 50 people in it now. We've done like two or three resume critiques already. Like there's no reason that you wouldn't join this Discord. Even if you don't like me, <laughs> that's fine. Join the Discord, man. You're gonna get so much value out of that. Clearly this is not a yes or no question. I can't answer this for every single person. There are a few things that you have to consider. There's how much money do you have to pay for school and how much money do you make? And both of these two things can actually vary quite a lot. So we're gonna talk about all of those factors. Okay, so when you're determining how much you're gonna pay for school, you have to think about these four questions. First off, we've got, are you a co-op student? Co-op students pay a co-op fee. Are you an international student? This is gonna be the biggest factor. It's gonna determine if you pay 10 grand versus like 50 grand, it's nuts. Do you always buy the useless textbooks? I had a few friends in first year that would purchase the textbooks before the first class and then they would sit down and the uh, professor would tell them that the textbooks either not used at all or they can find it for really cheap used or more than likely majority of the time there's a PDF floating around. And maybe the second most important factor is what faculty are you in? So today we're gonna talk about engineering and math. Engineering is all one big bubble. And in math, we're gonna focus specifically on computer science because the math faculty and computer science are slightly different for these numbers. So let's go through some of the factors. So we're gonna break this down in terms of two terms. That's how they price it on the Waterloo website. So we're gonna say eight months worth of school. And that's what we're gonna price this at and that's what we're gonna kind of extrapolate out from. So let's get to tuition in a second. Let's actually first look at how much you're gonna need in rent. Now, when I was in Waterloo, I found good places for about $425 a month. A lot of you are probably gasping right now because it's really, really low. But you have to know where to look to get a good deal like that. But the average person, I would say, pays between $500 to $600 a month. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, assume this person pays $600 a month for rent. Now, since this is two terms we're extrapolating over, assume that you have to purchase textbooks. The Waterloo website thinks that you'll probably spend about $2,200 on textbooks, and that is absolutely not right. So I'm gonna assume that you only end up spending about $1,000 on textbooks per term. So that's an extra $2,000. So now let's look at food and entertainment. Let's say food is $75 a week plus an additional $25 a week for entertainment. So call that $100 a week times four weeks in a month times eight months that we're extrapolating out over. Waterloo actually has a calculator for this and their suggested amount that you spend every month is $385 on these two things. So my estimation of $400 is actually pretty pretty accurate with being a little bit conservative. Of course, that depends on how much you wanna to go to Phil's, which is where I spent all my money. And then we've got the co-op fee, which is $739 per term. So that's 739 times two. Um, remember, we don't pay co-op fees on co-op terms. First things first, let's look at the case for a Canadian citizen. Once we add in the actual fee, so engineering is 17,100 for these two terms. CS is 15,900 for these two terms. That brings us to about 28,578 per year for engineering and about 27,378 for computer science. Um, now let's multiply that by four because you go to school for four years giving us $114,312 for engineering and $109,512 for computer science. Now, I'm gonna assume that I missed about $15,000 worth of expenses just to be conservative. So that gives us a grand total of 129,312 for engineering and 124,512 for computer science. Now I wanna look at the case of if you're an engineering or a math student that's an international student, what is that gonna do to these costs? Now, even if you're a Canadian citizen, you might wanna stick around just to learn these numbers because they're pretty surprising. So let's look at this. Engineering and math cost the same for an international student and they cost $61,300. I need a glass of water. 
We have the same calculation for your living expenses, how much you're gonna spend. Remember, those are all variable, but we're just going ahead with this estimation here. And now we've got this $61,300 per tuition. Multiply that by four. We're gonna add in our $15,000 just to be conservative, just to make sure we covered all our costs. And that leaves us at $270,200 for an international student. Now, if you look at those numbers, that's actually more than double that it is for a Canadian citizen. So they got a lot of ground to make up if you're an international student, but let's get into it. How much money are you going to make at Waterloo? This is the big question. So now if we go and look at how much you make in co-op, if it's more than that number, then yeah, the answer is yes, you can, you can pay for it. So when you look at the data that Waterloo has on their website, they have a Canadian table and they've got a United States table for how much you're gonna make when you're doing your co-ops. They break it down by faculty, so they've got engineering and they've got math. On the Canadian side, the math average is brought down by non-CS jobs being included in that average. And then when you flip over to the American side, the engineering average is brought down by including architecture in that umbrella. So what I'm gonna do here is get the closest estimate to what it would be if you got a software engineering internship. I'm gonna use the engineering average for the Canadian side. I'm gonna use the CS average for the American side. That's gonna be the most true to your actual income. Another thing I'm gonna assume here, I'm going to assume that the first three co-ops you get are in Canada and then the last three are in America. Now we're gonna break down the other numbers later. We'll go all six in Canada, and then we'll do all six in America just for fun. Uh, right here, this is kind of the breakdown I had. I actually did three in Canada, two in America, one in Ireland. That was not so good for how much money I made, um, but I actually had the opportunity, I was really close to doing two in Canada and four in America, in which case I would have made a lot more money. So it is a range depending on where you get in. So let's say work term one, you get $18.5 an hour. That's the average. Work term two, you get $20.4 an hour. Work term three, you get $22.08 an hour. Now this is where you level up and you switch over to making American incomes. You get your fourth internship in America. Great job, you're so smart. That's gonna give us $44.60 an hour. But wait, we also have to factor in that that's American dollars. So that's multiplied by 1.29, let's say. Work term five, $48.85 an hour. Again, multiplied by 1.29. Work term six, $47.9 an hour. Again, with that 1.29 factor. And then when we extrapolate this out to 16 weeks, that's 40 hours a week, 16 weeks in an internship. That's gonna leave us with a grand total of $154,000. Oh my God, $154,916. That's how much you're gonna make. So if you're a Canadian citizen, that is more than paying for your degree. You're actually gonna come out of school with an additional 25K. One thing I did not include in these numbers is your living expenses when you're on co-op. So let's assume that you actually don't make an additional $25,000 in your pocket. That actually goes to your living expenses while you're on co-op. So either way, you're gonna come out Canadian citizen. If you get those three and three, you're gonna come out debt-free. That's fantastic. That puts you so far ahead of most people in the world you don't even know. That's such a privilege. Now for international students, this is where it gets tough because you looked at that and you go, actually, I've got $115,000 worth of debt I would come out of school with. But that's way, 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 way more manageable than 270,000, right? 115 is still quite a lot. So one thing I think you still need to consider is how much money you're gonna get paid when you go to your first full-time job. I'm gonna share the offer, at least some components of the offer that I got from my first full-time job at Microsoft, which paid all the remaining debt I had. So you can get a, an idea of how big of a chunk you can get out of that 115 if you're an international student. I was offered a $20,000 signing bonus and I knew at least I know now that that was negotiable up to 30,000, which I did not negotiate for. So next time, make sure you negotiate. There was a $20,000 housing stipend, which you didn't have to spend on housing. I actually just pocketed the whole thing. So now you're up to 40K of, of signing bonus. That's pretty good. 120K worth of stock. Now that's actually worth over $215,000 now because the stock goes up over time. But remember that vests over four years. So you need to be at the company for four years to get that whole thing. Um, and it's broken out over a year. So you get, I don't know, 50 grand a year, whatever it is. And then on top of that, of course, you get your base pay, which you can just find on Glassdoor. So if you get a position like me, 
and you've kind of followed the similar pattern to the numbers I've shared with you already, then you're gonna be able to grind out that debt in two to three years if you're really on top of it. And that's actually not so bad. Like that's pretty good, right? Remember, I assumed that you got three in America, three in Canada, but it's possible that you get six in Canada, zero in America, which is gonna leave you with more debt. It's possible you get zero in uh, Canada and all six in America if you're like a super genius. You know, there's that 12 year old kid that goes to Waterloo. He probably falls into this category. And majority, the overwhelming majority of people do not fall into that category. But who knows, maybe you're really smart. Maybe you get two and four, maybe you get one and five, who knows. Let's go through those numbers just to see what the possible range of debt is. So let's assume that you got all six of them in Canada. I went through the numbers. I found that you in total made $88,000. That's much less than the 154. If you're a Canadian student, that's gonna land you in about $41,000 of debt. Not so bad, like I said, if you had my full-time job offer, you would be able to pay that off immediately. International students, that's gonna leave you with about $182,000 worth of debt. So yeah, that's a lot if you're an international student, keep that in mind, but you know, maybe you can really focus on getting one of those, you know, American internships that's, that are gonna pay a lot more. Uh, there's no reason you can't do it. Now let's end on a, a more bright note and assume that you got all six in America. That's actually gonna give you $209,000, a lot of money. So if you're a Canadian student, that would give you about $80,000 in your pocket. Now remember I said that we didn't really factor into consideration how much money it cost while you were on co-op terms. If you're an international student uh, and you got all six jobs in America, that's gonna land you with about $61,000 of debt, which is really not that much. And let's say you went to Facebook, for example, uh, and you got a return offer. Facebook is known for giving incredible signing, signing bonuses for their return offers. So you did an internship at Facebook, you went back, they gave you like a $100,000 signing bonus. You have no debt. Now that again is like the best, best, best case scenario. The chances that that's gonna be you are not impossible, but they're definitely pretty low. Now remember that these things are, are kind of amortized. You're going to have debt for the first few years and then you'll really take the big chunks out of that debt towards the last three years. So uh, don't be so concerned that you're racking up debt because it's gonna start coming down. I think I peaked at about 30, $32,000 of debt. Then my debt started to come down and uh, I was able to get it down pretty low. Of course, I did take that one job in Ireland, which actually took a lot of my earning potential away because they only paid half of what my current job was paying when I was on my fifth internship. So uh, remember, keep that into consideration. It's not all about money. But if money is, is important to you as it was to me, I hope this helps your, your finances uh, when you're thinking about this. I get this question quite a lot. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will see you next time. Have a good one.